In today's video, we're gonna be reviewing the online design service called Snapper, which is an image design service perfect for social media posts such as Instagram posts or even YouTube video thumbnails. And uh, it's kind of like a bit of an alternative to Canva. So I'm just logged into my, I've just got a free account here with Snapper and um, it's it's got a very simple interface. And from what I've seen so far, I have had a quick poke around, nothing too crazy. And it seems to be fairly, very simple to Canva, uh, but just a lot simpler. Uh, but you can see the interface, I think, is a little more sort of clutter-free, less distracting. So I've got the option here. I can choose a social media post to create, so an Instagram post or a YouTube thumbnail or even a Twitter post. Uh, and I've also got other things such as, you know, graphics I can put onto my blog as well as other headers and banners like a Facebook cover photo, uh, LinkedIn cover photo page, that sort of thing. So you got all of these options. It's very easy to find what you're after, which I think is cool because it's right in front of you, easy to go for. And like I said, they've tried to really minimize the options. So that way, if you're, maybe you're a little less computer savvy to use something like Canva or <laughs> Photoshop, which is obviously a whole different level to Canva. Uh, but you just got two basic areas such as your saved graphics, which is one I've played around with before and your create a graphic page. So we're gonna start off I'm going to look at creating, say, an Instagram post. So I'll click on this here. And you'll notice we've actually got some templates. You can start from scratch, or you can go in and find a template that you'd like to edit. So you can see they've actually got a lot of different templates that are, could be very useful depending on your style or the sort of look of your um, Instagram feed, the look you're going for. But uh, there's a lot of options here to go through. So I'm gonna pick one and we're just gonna have a bit of a play around, see what we can make happen with it. So maybe we'll go, something has a little bit of everything. We'll go something like this. Okay, so we're in on our template and like I said, we can also start from scratch and start adding in bits and pieces up here. But uh, just so we can get a, a bit of a look on how this works, I thought I'd just start with the template. So, like most programs, you can click and move. I'm just going to control Z. So we've got undo. We can undo and redo, which is cool. So if I take this and move it, I can undo, redo, that sort of thing. But it's pretty much just a case of click and move. So one thing I noticed that this doesn't seem to have, though, is that if I try to drag a square around the objects, I can't actually select them. I do have to hold down shift and select them one by one, which is a little bit of a, makes things can make things a little bit difficult, but it's not too bad. But um, it doesn't appear that I can group anything, but I can select it all and move it. So it's not a huge problem. Um, and I can also move things back and forward. So if I want to move this white square forward or backwards, sort of like so they're stacked in front or behind other things, that's pretty easy to do with this here. And I can even duplicate by hitting this duplicate button and move that around. So maybe I decide I want to do change coral reef, just have that as one line. I can duplicate that, move it down, just say tools or something like that pretty easily and change the font to blue. So one thing I will test is if I highlight reef, can I just change the color of the one word? I can't. So you can't actually just change the color of one area, it changes the entire text box. So I'm gonna hit control Z to go back. So it does have its limitations. Like I said, it is like, kind of like a more basic version of Canva. But what's cool is that might work for you, but we're gonna go through and check out some of these areas here. So if I go to background up here, it's gonna bring up a series of photos. So I can choose a photo for the background, like this sort of Darth Maul looking picture here. And I do have the issue that I, I can't seem to resize it. Um, I can click on it and it's just there. Uh, but the other thing you choose is patterns. They have these patterns here you can choose if you want something like that instead. So if you want something a little more, so less photo, more, you can choose a background like this, or you can upload your own. I've got an image here I tried before, but I can go to here and upload something else like this picture here. I can pop that in the background if I want to, or you can just choose a flat color like this pink. Although at the moment it's not showing up, probably because I have an image selected. So if I hit the X, oh no, it's just deleting it. So I'm deleting that. <laughs> so there's a few, we do seem to have a few issues here. Oh, here we are, reposition. So if I do choose, choose a background, click reposition and move that that way. So there you go. 
So there's a little bit of a learning curve here to learning some of this stuff and figuring it out. So I can scale it if I want to. I'm just going to click apply. But uh, so there does seem to be a few funny things that are worth learning here. I can flip the background as well. And if I click reposition, there's nowhere, it doesn't seem to be anywhere for me to change the opacity that I can see, but that's okay. So we can add an image, but the other thing you can do is go to effects here and you can choose the color overlay and overlay that over the background. You can darken the background or even blur it. So the fact is, like I said, it is more simple, but it's more easy just to access some of the basic features and move those around if you want to. So it's kind of nice and basic and easy that way. So I go to text and if I want to, I can also edit this text here or I can add my own subheading, my heading subheading. So maybe I'll decide to put that up here. It's like your next holiday or something like that. So I'm just gonna put here holiday time. So we've got this here and I can change the, the box size seems to be a little more difficult to change the text size of that just going to the panel, but that's okay. In the pro version though, you can add your own fonts, but for now, we're just gonna work. It looks like you've got a series of Google fonts here. You can go through, change the color. Like I said, if you wanna actually select one bit of text, you can't just change the color of that one text. It changes the whole thing. But uh, let's say we wanna choose something, something nice and thick, something like this. So you've got a few fonts to choose from. Make that left aligned. I'm gonna increase the size of this box, line it up a bit, and I can change the size. What happens if I type in 150? A bit too big, but we can size it down. So it's pretty cool. And we can change things like letter spacing or the line height. So if I have another line, obviously I can change that line height. The spacing can be changed. So you've got a lot of the usual options that you would get in an image editor like this, which is pretty cool. Now, with the shadow, we can add a shadow, offset and blur a little bit, and I can make that color something like, I can make a custom color, straight black, or even a, a blue color, something like that. And I can change the opacity and make it semi-transparent. So those are kind of like your main text uh, sort of options. Now, one thing I want to touch on too is that if you're a designer, one thing that is cool is you can have this grid show up so that way if you want to align things to a grid. So if I take this, maybe I decide I want that to line up with that grid line and then I can take this text. So that way you can get everything aligned pretty easily. Otherwise, uh, I don't see too much, too many options here to align things like just click and align like you wouldn't say Canva or Photoshop, but you know, like I said, it is a more basic version. One thing I do like about this though is the graphics available. So first of all, I'm gonna change this background to something pretty dull like this. So we can see what we're doing. There are a lot of cool little graphics you can add in here. We can search something. So maybe we type in, so if I type in martial arts, I get some wrestlers, I get some swords, uh, some things I can pop in there. Looks like Trinity from the Matrix. So holiday time, we can go have a wrestle or a wrestle holiday, something like that. <laughs> uh, and we've got all these options here and we've got vectors. So if we wanna add in some asterisks, I can add that in. And of course, change the color to red. And go back into graphics up here and just choose other items. So maybe if I type in car, there's nothing for a car. So that's a bit strange, but I guess these are more latest vectors. So these are more just basic shapes and things like that by the looks of it, like a chair. So I do think this is it's still in the early stages by the looks of it. it. looks like they're still developing some things and improving, but we can add in this image. So you sort of get the idea. It's it's a very basic image editor, kind of like a more basic version of Canva. Uh, again, we can create uploads or we can add in other shapes here like boxes and things like that. So if we're designing something, we can do that. So this could be handy if you wanna add a triangle in here, we can rotate that triangle put it in the top corner, make it red, and then we can even add in some text. So we'll go say a subheading, we can just say new, and then you have the option to rotate that and put something like that, whoops, grab the right thing. Maybe pop something like that in the corner, make it white, 
and just increase the font size. So you do have options like that if you want to play with those. But uh, yeah, so you get the idea. The editor is pretty basic, but you can achieve a lot of the basic things. It's, uh, it's very simple to use. Great if you are if you don't want to deal with the complexity of something like Photoshop or Canva, which are still, Canva is still fairly simple, especially compared to Photoshop, but this is even simpler if you just want to cut out all the fluff. So that's how you can use that editor now. This does not save automatically. You do have to click save up here. And of course, if I want to change the title, I do have to type that up here. So I'm just going to say test graphic. Or test, we'll just call it test. And hit enter. It's now called test. Save that again. Now I can share that if I want to. Um, being the free version, if I get a download, I've only got three downloads, but I can have a transparent background which is pretty cool. Because in Canva, if you have the free version, you can't actually save a PNG with a transparent background. So this could be a way that if you want to create something simple with a transparent background, you can use this as an alternative to Canva so you can download a PNG with a transparent background, which is pretty cool. So once I'm done, there is a bit of a funny issue where I'm not really sure. If I want to exit back to my home or dashboard, the logo doesn't take me anywhere. Uh, I can check my saved graphics or create a graphic. And that's where I think there's a little bit of confusion with the user interface. If I click up here, create a graphic is actually what I want to click because that's where I go to go home. But maybe we just want to go home. So I don't want to actually take an action, whereas this sort of implies an action and can be a bit confusing to some people. But create a graphic is essentially how we get back to this home page to create more. And if I go on to save graphics, I've got my something I created earlier and I've got this other test here that we were just playing with. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. That's that's my uh, my review of Snapper. I think if you're gonna use this, Snapper is, like I said, it's probably something if you're looking for the most basic of tools without any confusion or, or clutter or distraction, this is really a great tool for that. There, are, If you wanna check this out, there is a link in the description below. Um, if you're not too happy with this, it might still be handy. You only get three downloads a month but uh, it might still be handy if you want to create some transparent PNGs that uh, you would normally have to pay uh, for a Canva account to use. Um, so that way, you know, if you're creating images in Canva, but you want something particularly to be a PNG for your website, you can probably come over to Snapper and do it in that, but it might be more difficult with less tools. So uh, overall, not bad. I think Canva still has the edge on this particular tool, but it is still coming down to personal preference might be perfect for you or someone who just doesn't want to use Canva in particular or Photoshop that's just a whole other level of complexity for an average person who's never used an image editor before. Anyway, but that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed our review. If you do want to check out Snapper, just check out the link below in the description. Otherwise, I uh, hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.